Hey everybody, this is Garrett with Earth and Time and today I'm visiting the California Citrus State Park in Riverside, California. Come join me, let's learn a little bit about citrus history and how citrus helped form the Southern California that we have today. Pretty interesting history. I'm excited to check out this visitor center. I've never been here before, although I used to actually live here in the Riverside area uh, for a very long time. So I'm really excited to check it out. Let's go take a look. Here are the visitor center hours to start off with. So they're only open Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And I'm here on a Sunday. I've got about an hour and a half, two hours before they close today. The visitor center is only open 10 to four, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So this museum is set up to talk about the history of citrus. And it all starts 5,000 years ago. And really with something called a citron, mandarin oranges and shaddocks were kind of the earliest versions of citrus and they really came from if you look on here kind of in this area of I guess the the eastern portion of the Himalayas and then spread to a lot of different area areas in the world and then different cultures would start cultivating them and mixing the different varieties together uh, for instance I just found out that a pomelo and an orange were mixed together and that's how we got a grapefruit interesting so they'd start breeding these different types, all starting from just a few types of citrus into the amazing examples and varieties that we have today. So this is an image just showing maybe in the Himalayas how they would have carried the citron through on these baskets, uh, trading between different places. So the key for any of these fruits or any type of food changing hands was often through trade. So it was people from one region move to another or trade with another region. They would trade all kinds of things culturally and as well as food. And that seems to be a central theme of this whole museum. I like the little displays they have here learning about the history of citrus, which of course is so important for all of us. I'm gonna tell you I had a glass of orange juice yesterday and I eat lemons a lot and like lemonade. And this is showing what maybe one of the old trade routes would have looked like or trading centers along the Silk Road, what you can imagine. And here are some of the citrons, shaddocks and mandarins that would have been traded or sold at the markets. So from the citron, you ended up with a number of other types of fruits like the shaddock which eventually was cultivated and became lemons. And then those were transported across the Mediterranean by a dhow, which is a durable type of ship that Arabian vessels used for trade. And they can hold up to 200 tons. Pretty fascinating. And this shows some of the expansion of the Arabian Empire and along with that expansion, you had the spread of citrus to the west. Now at this time already in China, they were already cultivating citrus in the Yangtze Valley. And here's more about that story. 500 BC, citrus travels the Silk Road. So knowing that citrus started this region initially as a citron, it eventually spread out and started traveling all over the ancient world in both directions, both to the west and to the east. So in the ancient Roman Empire, they actually built what were called orangeries to grow citrus. And they actually did this for a long time. And although glass, I didn't know this, was invented in Egypt 3,000 years earlier, the Romans used glass for greenhouses so they can grow their oranges and other produce. What's interesting is when the Roman Empire fell, Oranges weren't in Europe for another 400 years, but they were still flourishing in the Middle East areas. So from 1,300, they had the Crusades in the Middle East. And when that was going on, the Crusaders actually brought back citrus products with them back to Europe and reintroduced them. The famous Marco Polo, when he returned in 1295, actually was able to introduce and brought some wonderful citrus varieties, it says, back to Europe as well. So 
a lot going on during this time, bringing citrus back from uh, Asia, different parts of Asia, um, and the Middle East back to Europe. And so we're working up to where eventually oranges would end up here in Southern California. So now in 1518 to 1540, oranges started reaching Central and South America and they started developing oranges there as well. So with oranges coming to the missions, 1769, you'll see that here, the citrus reaches Alta, California. So Spanish explorers first came here the padres and priests actually brought the oranges here. They started growing them. So here's a picture of, of one of the missions and you can see the, the orange groves or the groves off in the distance. In fact, the first large scale citrus groves were outside a mission in California. We're planning 1834 at Mission San Gabriel, uh, which is in the greater Los Angeles area. So in 1841, William Wolf's Guild began setting out to develop the first big commercial citrus fields. And what was going on during that time or close to that time was of course the gold rush that started in 1848. So there are a number of people coming this direction who are looking for riches. And California recently uh, became part of the United States. So there was a lot happening in, in the, the early to mid 18, to late 1840s, which really helped get the orange gold rush, if you will, or the orange rush going in this part of the country. The miners would come, they needed to eat. They, of course, wanted fresh produce. You were in an environment where oranges could grow readily. And so William Wolfskill took advantage of that and developed some of these first orange groves and then it continued on from there. This is showing maybe what an old miners camp general store would have looked like. And you'll notice that they have cloth for making uh, all kinds of stuff dresses shirts whatever you needed they had some sacks of flour and then notice there's a lot of citrus in here so there would have been oranges they have lanterns and other preserves in here but oranges were central to helping feed the number of miners and people flooding into california during the gold rush so is there a perfect orange or perfect citrus fruit and this says yes in 1873 the Neville Orange the perfect crop arrives in California which would really help springboard Southern California into this major agricultural powerhouse that it still is today California is very much an agricultural powerhouse but for oranges and for citrus this is really when it started is when they got this Brazilian spawned new what they call a mutant a navel orange which was able to grow here in abundance in fact, you're supposed to be able to still see the original first Washington Naval Orange tree in Riverside here. I'm not going to have a chance to go take a look at that during this trip, but maybe another time I'll come back. One of the big questions, one of the biggest problems early on for any community based on agriculture is how do we get enough water in the area? And so in 1880, they started wrestling with this. And so they built a series of aqueducts and canals to bring water into this area. And here's an example of a scaled model with one of these trusses bringing water across that would have come into some of the orange groves. So with such a long growing season, one of the things the orchards need to do here as a business is figure out how do we get our products from Southern California and expand out, especially to the East Coast where that was really the population center of the country. Uh, in the late 1800s. So how do we get food out that way? And with the opening of the Transcontinental Railroad, companies will eventually be able to sh start shipping oranges to the East Coast. I learned so much about citrus in here. I had no idea there was this much history and I didn't know it was gonna be so fascinating. You all know I love history and I've loved learning about origins. I love learning about where things come from. But how they've walked through the story of citrus here I think is very fascinating. Um, I didn't know it originated kind of in the Himalayan, the eastern part of the Himalayan mountains. That's fascinating. And it really originated as just a few different varieties that were around. Um, the Shattuck, which is known as a, the Pumalo, and the Mandarin Orange, and the Citron were kind of the three big ones that were kind of around. And then they started mixing those varieties together. And then we ended up things with like grapefruits or lemons and limes. Um, really interesting 
to learn more about that story. Let's go ahead from here in the museum, let's go ahead and head outside and go take a look. So they actually have a bunch of the orchards still preserved here. Now, a lot of the orchards are gone as expansions occurred in Southern California. As we know, it's a major population center. But let's go check out some of these orchards that are left over and see what they look like. All right, so I'm starting to walk through a portion of the orchards that are here and we can immediately see they have different varieties. Um, they have one here called a Buddha's Hand Citron, which isn't actually uh, in bloom right now. Although I do see a little flower, a little bud coming in. But we can see there's other varieties of citrus here. So these are called Nagami Kumquats and they're just starting to come in. On this side we have a Tangelo. It looks like he has maybe some pomelos up that way. We have mandarin oranges. All of us love mandarin oranges, right? They're fantastic. We have another tangelo here. And there's actually people picking their own oranges over here, which is pretty exciting. On this side, we have the Valencia oranges over that direction. And then here are different types of navel oranges that are growing on the, across these trees. One thing I'll tell you is the smell is amazing. It takes me back from growing up down in this area to where when I was a kid, I'd run through the orchards and play with my, my friends. We'd play tag or hide and seek. Um, we'd grab oranges and eat them um, or grapefruit. Really enjoy doing that, but the smell, there's something about the smell of oranges growing and orange groves. That's just amazing. So this trail winds and winds and goes for quite a distance. And actually there are so many different varieties of citrus here. It truly is a living museum where they preserved and have a tree of every kind of citrus that's in here. There's a pomelo back there. Here's some mandarins over, over on this side, the pomelo, uh, different types of mandarins, beautiful mandarin tree up there. Look at all those. And so you can walk through and, and learn about the different types. Now, what I don't know is they have a sign that says, please do not pick them. However, I just did see that looked like they had a program growing on. So you can probably look into it on the state of California website for the Citrus, California Citrus State Park and find out if you can come here and pick some oranges or citrus yourself. It looks like they had groups that are doing that led by a ranger. So that may be an opportunity here to come and try some of these different flavors. Probably an amazing activity for a Girl Scout troop or a Boy Scout troop or for a school activity to have students come here and really try a bunch of these types of citrus. Uh, you'll see folks up there, so these, these rows wind for quite a ways. I'm not gonna have time, unfortunately, to go through every single one, but I think you all get the idea here of what some of these orchards would have looked like, a little bit more about the history of citrus, how important it was for citrus in the forming of the Southern California that we have today. Without citrus, without the orange industry, you probably wouldn't have settled as much of California as quickly as they did. So really, and stay tuned for my episode on, on the three big things that I think really helped make Southern California, Southern California, and that are oranges, oil, and Hollywood, of course. But really, I'm gonna focus when I talk about that more on Walt Disney. And so I'll have all those videos as they've come out. If they've come out already by the time this comes out, linked below so you can take a look at that but as i continue to walk through some of these orchards it is a beautiful spot to come just enjoy some beautiful weather you can see the palm trees behind me you have all the citrus groves a lot of oranges in that direction if i turn this around you'll see these are all citrus groves across this little valley over there those are all different types of citrus looks like maybe oranges over there but i know grapefruit grow out here um, of course, lemons and limes as well, but you can see all those orchards out there and you can see the mountains off in the distance with the snow. But this is a nice pan of the Citrus State Park, a really, really interesting, educational and fun place to come visit. You can really get an idea of how these were set up in rows and the spacing between them for these different orange trees and various citrus trees and see these long rows going back and back and back. And there's hundreds and hundreds or I don't know, a thousand row of these things sometimes in some of these large orchards, pretty amazing. And you imagine the number of people it took to work at these orchards to get the fruit, to package the fruit, and how many people that would have brought to this area of Southern California 
uh, to settle here and start families and help develop everything from schools to libraries to local cultural things. So oranges became a very important part of the settlement and expansion of the Southern California as we see it today. Thank you all for joining me today to learn a little bit more about the history of citrus, its role here in helping make Southern California what Southern California is today. I really hope you enjoyed this episode. I hope you learned a lot. I should have learned a lot. I had no idea uh, the history of fruit was so fascinating. Now I want to learn more about apples and learn about maybe pineapples. I don't know. Bananas, right? It would be fun to, to visit various different fruit historic sites, I guess. But thank you again for joining me. If you enjoyed this episode, please give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Hit that bell for notifications so you can keep up on all my adventures. And thank you all very much for joining me today.